Good morning, Park Avenue Christian Church. Just a few announcements. Um, most of them are in your bulletin, so just make sure you read the details. Um, we need people to sign up for the coffee cart again. We have next week covered, but then we have a couple of weeks, um, one more in, in August, and then a few in September. So please sign up if you're willing to host the coffee cart. Um, also, um, Mission Jamaica fundraiser this Tuesday at Applebee's. Same as last couple times, there's a special menu, and if you order off of that menu, we get 50% of the proceeds from those meals. Um, and that's all day, from 11 to 11, so come join us. Next Saturday is the men's breakfast at 8 in Fellowship Hall. School drive is going on right now, um, and then also the Vacation Bible School will be coming up in a few weeks. So please join me now as we listen to Linda with the prelude. Scripture for the call to worship this morning comes from Nehemiah 9, verses 5 to 6. Stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry hosts, the earth and all that is in it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. Please join me in prayer. 
Lord, we are so grateful for these beautiful days that we've been blessed with. We enjoy the time that we've been spending with family and friends. Be with us here in this hour of worship and praise you. We ask these things in your name. Join me now for the praise hymn, This Little Light of Mine. Please stand. Thank you. You may be seated. I am wondering where you've seen God this last week. Yeah, Mike. Indeed, amen. Praise God. So, Mike's dad, 91 tomorrow. What a gift. Yeah, Vicki. Very good. Uh, seeing uh, JC working in the, the cat, cattleman's booth, yep, at the state fair. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, huh, Sandy? Amen. Praise God for that. So. Sandy had uh, all of her subsequent generations with her uh, yesterday or Friday? Thursday, Thursday, very good. I saw one more over here, Mary. Very good. Yeah, God's hand at work uh, with your boys. Uh, Father's Day uh, gift, um, ledges, uh, playing playing the back nine. It, 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 that's in ledges and how beautiful that is. So I would just uh, uh, tr end this and, or, and transition into prayer by saying uh, two things to me stand out in terms of this congregation. Uh, one is our, our uh, looking at history, church's history, last Sunday, and you all participated very well in that, and just to see all the places where God has been with you, 
the changes you've made, how God's been with you in some of the challenges, uh, and the real high moments at this church. And then secondly, uh, National Night Out, there were about 10 of us that helped with that. Um, hundreds of people at Park Avenue Elementary. Um, Carolyn Schultz made up some uh, flyers that are on tables, which you can take and give to other people about what we're doing um, uh, w with the church and what God is doing here. Uh, we had lots of lots and lots and lots of participation, dozens of families. Uh, well, I've got pictures which I'll put out in the uplift this week. Uh, th there was a long line, always waiting for our balloons to be made uh, by by Kaylee and the rest of us. So uh, it was just a wonderful moment, and uh, a lot of us adults uh, had to try to remember. Uh, and then to fail over and over again at trying to tie the ends of those long skinny balloons and how to tie them off and uh, I, I could hardly get it. Mike got several and uh, but anyway it was just a lot of fun uh, and a lot of good very good conversations where we have reached out uh, into the neighborhoods here in, in a significant way. And with that I'll ask us now to go to God in prayer with that joy in mind, all these ways that we have seen God and been touched by God this last week. We thank God for God's being in our lives, for God's presence, for God's great love. We thank God for this time of worship, and we listen to God now as we breathe deeply of God's good spirit. We pray together as we first listen for God's voice. God, indeed, we thank you for this beautiful day, for this uh, just long series of days of great weather and being outside and, and enjoying your world. We thank you for all of these blessings that we have mentioned. We thank you how you have been with us and how you have helped us uh, do things that we normally do and how you have helped us do new things in our lives. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus, who helped start our life over and over and over again through forgiveness of our sins. We thank you so much for this great gift of Jesus in our life. We turn to Jesus, your gift to us again, and admit to you and confess to you our own sin, our wrongdoings, our mistakes. We are truly sorry for them. And we ask your forgiveness now again through the Christ. Thank you, O oh God, for forgiving us and for loving us. Thank you for helping us, giving us courage to step out in faith, to follow you in faith, whether, wherever that is, to help us to uh, cross our own boundaries and our own Red Sea, to, to find you in new challenges, to find you there helping us, waiting for us, guiding us, and directing us. Thank you so much for your strength and for your love and your guidance. For all these gifts, we are truly grateful. For the gift of prayer, we are grateful, O oh God. And so we pray to you now our own prayers, whatever they are. We speak them out loud, and we pray them silently to you in these next few moments.
God, thank you for hearing our prayers. God, we ask for your continued guidance, for, your, for us to feel your grace just pour down through, on us and through us and in us. Through the Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. I'll ask the children to come forward for the children's moment, please. All right, guys, we're going to start up here. Um, and actually, I don't need to do that. Put that there. All right, we're going to start standing up. So, hey guys, nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. I have all girls today, so I should say ladies, girls. Okay, so um, have you all seen um, lately or, or uh, somewhere in your life how uh, little babies begin to walk upstairs and downstairs? Have you noticed that? Have you watched that happen? No, have you seen that lately? So let me just ask you, are they more comfortable like in a stair like this without handrails, are they more comfortable walking down like this or are they more comfortable walking up like this? How do you think? Little kids. D down, how come? What do you think? Yep. How about you, Gwen? Do you like your little sister? What's she like going up or down the stairs? Uh, most of the time, right. And but because, uh, like little kids, they are able, I've watched this in our grandson, they're able to hold on, right, to the steps. So whenever you go down, uh, it's a little bit harder to balance. You don't quite have anything to hold on to. Uh, and that's new for them. It's like all new things in our lives. Um, it's kind of hard for us to get our balance uh, and, like, go down steps. So what I want to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you two questions. Have everyone get on like the top step here. And think of something in, in your mind, and you can shout it out, that you've tried something brand new like this summer, like going into a deeper part of the pool, or you met a new friend, or you're about to start, start a new school year or whatever. So put that in your head and then take a step. So do that with me. So can, and then uh, if you think of something else like that, but this time, uh, think about how God is helping you take the step. Okay, so let's take the step down. And, um, and then on the last step, and then we'll sit down and get in our circle, uh, to think about um, how you feel God's strength helping you with steps in your life. Something. All right, so everyone have a seat. I'll grab the candy, and I'll just uh, ask you, um, so did you, what was some of the things you thought about as you were going down, your new thing? What are some of the things you thought about? Oh, open your eyes underwater. That's cool. That's very cool. I remember when I was told to do that, yeah. How to make balloon animals. Yeah. <laughs> We really did that, didn't we, on Tuesday? Yeah, you did a really good job, Naomi. What else? Do you have one, Alana? How about Gwen? Do you have one, Gwen? Think of something? Swimming in a pool. Swimming in a pool? Yeah, that's good. And so how did God help you do all those things? How does God help you? Like with your surgery, how does God help you in that moment? How do, you, do you feel like God's love? And you feel God's strength makes you braver. That's good. Yeah, all those things help. Uh, whenever we take a new step and try new things, uh, God helps us with all of that. So uh, next time we try something new, think about God, and God will help us, okay? So would you uh, do an I say, you say prayer? I'll say something. Can you repeat after me, please, dear God? Thank you for helping us take new steps. In Jesus' name, amen. Very good. All right, there you go. Rolos are at the bottom, I think, when you do have Rolos in there. Okay, it's good.
scripture reading this morning comes from Exodus 14, verses 21 to 25. And in your pew Bible, it's on page 57 if you want to follow along. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Thank you very much, Susan, for the song and for the reading, and Linda and your leadership and uh, what the video people do and sound people do for us. I'm grateful for all of that uh, leadership in worship. And I ask you to uh, keep your Bibles out if you have them out or pull them out in, in just a few minutes because we'll be uh, moving through uh, chapter 14 of Exodus together. Uh, I'll ask you to, to take a look at some of the verses in chapter 14 so it's on that same page, pages 56 and 57 in Exodus, that we looked at this morning earlier uh, as with the church school group or the all-church gathering at 9.30 as we've been doing. Um, so with that, though, first, before we do any of that, uh, I'll ask you to pray with me, please. God, bless us in this time so that we might hear your word and respond in faith we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is the most difficult part of starting a new adventure, a new project? What's the hardest part? Getting started. Exactly right. Fear, I heard that too. Yep. The unknowing, yeah. Yeah. Good responses. And all of that is in that getting started, that first step, which we see here on the main image, the, the baby step there, um, <clears throat> which is a uh, you know big uh, uh, undertaking, that, that, very, that very first step. And I ask us to put our minds, uh, if we can, into the, the body of an infant uh, so if we could pretend to be however old, you know, that is one or one and a half or, or whatever, what do you think is going through the mind and the heart of a little kid that takes a first step? What would you suspect is going through their mind or their body? Excitement, yep. I, I'm sorry? I'm gonna fall, yep. Fear, good. Wow, good. Look at me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That, I think, is all uh, part of that experience. And if we think about any major project uh, or adventure that we start, all of those things are true about us right, as well. It's wow and exciting and, and really afraid and look at me and look at me go and, and that, that all is involved in that. It has been said that the most difficult and most important part of any journey is that first step as we've just noted. So think about all of our lives. The most difficult and important sale is often the first right? The most difficult and important uh, date, uh, relationship, whatever we are on is the first. The most important 
and it, the most difficult and important sermon in the beginning of a relationship between pastor and congregation is the first. The most difficult and important part of swimming that we mentioned a few moments ago, right, is getting into the water. And the most difficult and important part of going home to God and dying is recognizing that we are transitioning to another life and acknowledging that and letting God catch us, letting God help us in that transition. That's why faith is so important at the end of this life and in the transition to the next. The first step is what the Israelites did that as they crossed into the Red Sea, or the Reed Sea is been another interpretation of that name. They took a step. We talked again about this in the class this morning. And just imagine what that step must have been like, to see that water way up there and to have uh, that army uh, in, in back of them, Pharaoh's army. Uh, and as Carolyn said in our class, they must have been terrified. Uh, because who's seen water before on either side of you and wondering what that water might do? Brand new experience for them uh, and for any one of us. So that they took a risk. They took a real risk in taking that first step. Now, what, what can we say about that risk that they took? What are some things that we can say about it? Well, one is they are called by God, like we talked about last Sunday in this story. God starts all great first journeys. Second, that they had God's help, uh, and that, that was recorded for us in this story with all the plagues, right? The frogs and all, all, all of the stuff that happened to them that ended in the, the death of the firstborn babies of the Egyptians. They, but they had God's help. They had material help. They plundered the Egyptians. They took their silver and gold, and that's part of this story too. And that God is orchestrating all of these events. So the call started with God, and God is with them every step of the way in this new project, in this new adventure uh, that they are on. So let's take just a brief look at the story. Uh, we're in Exodus 14 again, verses 10 through 12. And so uh, this story in, uh, is recorded in Exodus, uh, mentions the, the Pharaoh. Um, and with all of these things I just mentioned being true, um, how are they feeling? God's orchestrating these events. They, they're called by God. So at the end of verse 10, and, at, and as we read verse 11 and verse 12, how are they feeling? How are the Israelites feeling? Great fear. I'm sorry? Oh, they're done. Yeah, yes. Yeah, we, we, we're done. I mean, we, we don't want to do this. It, there's this water, and, and, there, and here, come, here come Pharaoh's army and, and, and all of that. Even though they had all these promises, and, and even though they they have a sense that God is orchestrating these events, they're still terrified, right? And, and they say, you know, this, this we told you, as you read on, right, versus um, the, the rest of those verses, as you read on, we told you this is going to happen, Moses, uh, that if you took us out of Egypt, all these terrible things are going to uh, ha happen to us. And you just kind of wonder, you know, what, you kind of understand, we kind of understand, and yet, as well, we kind of don't, because God, God is supposedly in charge here. They are out of Egypt, this is important, but they're not out of danger. They're still in physical danger, 
but they're also in danger in terms of their faith, whether their faith is working for them or not. They're out of Egypt, but they're not out of danger, just like with our problems, right? We can get out of our problems, we can leave a relationship, we can leave a job that we don't like, we can, we can move to another state to get away from uh, relatives or friends that, that we don't care for, but then our problems are still with us and we still have to deal with them. And we have to get counseling or, or talk through it or have to have time heal us or whatever. We can escape physically, but our issues are still there that we have to deal with. In other words, they had escaped, back to the Israelites for a minute, they, have, they had escaped Egypt, but Egypt was still inside of them. They had escaped oppression and slavery, but they were still enslaved spiritually and emotionally and intellectually. And so what does a leader do? We often turn to, the, they complain to the leader. They say, you know, Moses is all your fault, uh, which often happens in, in these kinds of cases. And so what does Moses say? Verses 13 and 14, take a look. What does Moses say? Fear not, because, because why? The Lord will fight for you, right? The Lord's going to be there for He reminds them of their faith, who to have faith in, that uh, God is actually in, in this, in this new adventure, in this new scary thing, in this risk. God is there uh, helping them. And, and God will fight for you. And as well, Moses says, keep still. Now, where do we know and where have we read before about the whole keeping still thing? In other words, don't get so upset. Don't get so freaked out. If the world's not going to end. You may think it's going to end. It's not going to end. Keep still. Where do we know that? Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yea, I say, wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. You read other scriptures, and that refrain of waiting on the Lord and keeping still. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the heavens. I am exalted in the earth. Psalm 46, 10. I would recommend that you memorize a couple of those scriptures. So that in the moments where you freak out, or I freak out, those scriptures come to us. Because that happens to me. Whenever I freak out, and I do, and I get upset, or I wonder if the waves are going to crash in on me, those scriptures come to me. Because I memorize them. And that's not saying, yo, Doug's you know, good, and your preacher's supposed to do that, blah, blah, blah. I have those same feelings of fear. And I need that assurance of Scripture. So I would recommend that uh, to you as well, that, that you do that. And then what does God say, those next several verses after that? Moses says something, and then God says something. Verse 15 and following. What does God say? Yeah, why are you afraid? Yep. What else does God say? Yeah, do what I told you to. That's right. Have faith. Yep. And he, what does he tell Moses to do with his hands? Raise your hands. Right. So here's where, you know, the Ten Commandments movie comes in, right? <laughs> we see Charlton Heston up with his hands, right? And, and then the water goes up. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do now, um, to apply this to our own lives. Think of an issue that you are currently dealing with, whatever problem, so whatever's upsetting you, whatever. And if you want to, don't feel like you have to, you can do it a little bit like this. But I ask you to imagine the issue. Think of it in your head. Got it? Raise your hands, please. 
Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't have to be necessarily just one. It could be many. Raise your hands. <laughs> and, and let God fill you with God's courage and God's strength. And that's good. Thank you for doing that. I hope that helped. If it didn't, you know, you can do another practice. There are many other, other practices that, uh, that, that we, we can use. But Moses stretches out his hands. The waters divide. People take a step. Take that step of faith. And the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, God's pillars surround them and protect them from the, from the Egyptians. God is with them. God is with us. There are signs of that all around. But we must, just like the Israelites did, take the first step in faith. We talked about this in the Sunday school class. God calls, God initiates great adventures and projects in our lives, but our response is the faith response. We must take that step. God can't do that for us. Moses can't do that for us. Cindy can't do that for me. We must do that. Take that step physically, intellectually, emotionally into a new future with God that God is creating for us. And as we read on, we read that God does indeed fight for the Israelites. Pharaoh had, think about this for a moment, the most advanced weapon, military weapon at the time in terms of the chariot. It was like, like our modern day tank. And he had these chariots that he was using and, and if God weren't present, they would have mowed all the Israelites down just in a matter of minutes with these chariots. But God's might was stronger than that and with the water of the Red Sea drowned the Egyptians and stopped the greatest military power at that time in its tracks. God literally removed their wheels, the scripture tells us. Oppression and fear that the Israelites knew in Egypt lead to death. And it leads to death of our own lives, in their own souls. Oppression and fear leads to death. But the Egyptians lose in this story, and only God wins. So I ask us for another moment to think of a task or a job or some project or a conversation or a risk that we must take in the near future that's important to our lives. It could be big or small. And I ask us just to take another minute. You don't have to raise your hands. You can if you want to. But just to pray about that. To pray about that task, that job, that risk, that conversation that you feel that you've got to take, but you've got some fear about it. And you have some trepidation about it. So let's pray, please. Amen.
want to take another extra few minutes and talk about Park Avenue Christian Church. And a significant step toward change that I believe God is asking this church to take. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think God will help us discover that together. We've taken lots of little baby steps, little baby steps as a congregation, and that's, those have been great. But I believe God is asking this church to take a step of faith and take a somewhat larger step of faith to stretch and grow. I believe growth happens whenever we take a risk and take a larger step than a baby step and grow. My wife liked to say to her young son when he was small, stretch and grow. Stretch and grow. And when we do that, we find that in those changes, in those larger projects, in those adventures, that God will come to our aid. God will help guide us and direct us. And God will bless that step taken in faith. That's why I've been doing with you some interim things. I am not your interim. I am not Sheldon. I am not Tim. They have great guys who have ministries elsewhere. I am Doug. Hi, I'm Doug. Nice to meet you. I'm different than those guys. And I'm different than any other pastor you've ever had. And I'm looking forward to us, hopefully, to take significant steps together. Discerned in prayer that rise up out of our faith and that come from God. And then whenever we do that together, God wins. Doug doesn't win. PACC doesn't win. I mean, we do. But God is the one that wins because God's the one that's the most important one in the room, right? To whom we give the glory, right? To whom we worship, right? Can I hear some amens on that? Amen. This is a great congregation that has done great things. But I also listened to your history last week. And I listened as I heard... We did this, we did that, we moved the building, we changed the building, we reoriented the building. If a congregation can totally move a building, a congregation can make some of the steps, significant steps, for it to be a 21st century church. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's what I'm here to help you to do. So I ask us to think about that, to pray about that, to be in prayer about it, and as these next months and years go on, for us to discern where God is leading us together. Can we do that? I hear an amen on that? Thank you. So I end this with just a kind reminder that uh, one of the persons that helps us, has helped us take significant steps in our past is our mom, or our mom, as they say in England. So we have a little a gift here in a video of uh, the mom song that reminds us of the importance of taking significant steps 
in, in the different moments of our lives. Um, and two little notes before we watch the video of the mom song. One is we used to have these things called telephones, right? A long, long, long time ago. And telephones were things that sat on the wall or on a table and you pick up part of the device and you put it to you. So that's a, an important part uh, to, to remember here. The, the uh, other things, the other thing to remember is that we used to have these things, I found mine the other day thrown in a drawer, uh, called an iPod. A long, long, in ancient history, a long time ago. And the, you got one, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Andy. And some of us still have them, right? And you, what do you do with iPods? Listen to music or podcasts or whatever. So that's part of the song too. So let's watch together and enjoy the mom song, please. Are you wearing backwards books and your lunch and your homework and credit coat and your gloves and your scarf and hat? Don't forget, you got to feed the cat each breakfast. It's what tell us it's the most important meal of all. Take vitamins so you will grow up one day too, baby. Would you just play fair? Be polite, make a friend, don't forget to share. Working out which term never can get, 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 get along. The baby come down there, clean your room, watch your clothes, put your stuff away, make your bed, do it now. Do we have all day? Were you born in a barn? Would you like some hay? Can you hear a word I say? the mom here. Let's pray, please. God, thank you so much for being our mom and our dad, for guiding us, for loving us, for directing us, for helping us with significant steps. Thank you, God, for giving us faith and courage, and most of all, your love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One place where we experience God's love and grace is this communion table, to which all are welcome as the bread and the cup are passed to you. So let us prepare for this time of communion by singing the song, Eat This Bread, uh, one time, please. <laughs>
Paul tells us about this meal in 1 Corinthians 11 when he writes, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Will you pray with us, please? Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us to this table once again. We know we come every week and that it should grow old, but it never does grow old because we know that we can come in freedom. We thank you for the blessing of this bread and the cup. May it nourish our bodies in the week ahead. In your son's name, he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come.
verse this morning it comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 8. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. And the deacons receive our tithes and offerings this morning.
pray with me, please? God, thank you for these gifts, most of all for the gift of your life that you pour into us. May all of these gifts be used so that your kingdom, your reign, your love are known by all, and especially the ones that we touch and they're touched by these gifts. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We now move to a time in which we give our lives to Christ, especially through the singing of this next song. It's also a time for anyone who wants to become a member of this church to do so by coming forward and joining by confession of faith or transfer membership from another church. Let us now please sing together, Peace Like a River, verses 1, 2, and 3. microphone on. <laughs> Let us pray. God, may you bless us and keep us. May you make your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May you lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.